So, The Isle Air by Ian Crichton Smith. Um, this is just a little annotated attempt to take you through the poem. Uh, hopefully it will be of use to you for revision. The photograph obviously is taken from the, the, the 1st of January 1919, um, once the light had broken after the boat sank. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Hope you enjoy, hope this is useful. If you put ILAIR or HMS ILAIR into a search engine, you'll soon find the, the Wikipedia entry. Um, more interesting is to follow the links at the bottom of this. Some of the, which will take you to some of the sites where, uh, like the Scots at War site, which will just give you a wee bit more uh, background and some some pictures of the some of the people involved. One of the more interesting sites was this one, which I found. Um, I had to get to it through the web archive, um, which I don't know if you're aware of, but that it caches as much of the web as possible. So this is part of why I say to people, you know, you might think you've downloaded things or you've deleted things, but um, quite often they will hang on for the grim life. So be warned about that. Um, it's a, an awkward um, URL. The, the reason that it's worth uh, having a wee look at, it will soon tell you the story of John F. MacLeod, um, who's this gentleman here. He was the, the man who, along with four or five others, managed to claim the mast on the Isle Air, but only he was able to hold on through the night, and so he was rescued the following morning. The poem itself was written by Ian Crichton Smith, um, one of Scotland's leading poets of the 20th century. I think... You know, you can find out about him on Wikipedia, and there are plenty of other sites that you can find out about him, and I would recommend that you do. I'm obviously looking at several of his other poems. Uh, one of the things I did want to say, though, is that the, his, his chosen voice, the narrative voice, the, the persona which he adopts in the telling of the poem is a, a, a really good device and very, very well handled. But we'll talk about that when we get to the poem proper. One thing that's really important to be aware of is that Crank Smith um, really didn't like dogma. Um, and I've given you a definition down at the bottom here of what dogma actually is. Um, fundamentally, he was opposed to, I suppose, what organised religions or any organisation where you had to follow blindly. He was much more open to questioning and to um, taking nothing for granted. Um, despite his Presbyterian upbringing in the west coast of Scotland, he did he was an atheist. Yet this doesn't prevent him from very effectively um, juggling with the ideas that the the elder in the poem has to juggle with. I suppose the bottom line with the Isle Air that it's a, a poem about someone trying to come to terms with faith, which gives us the the, the two main themes of the poem, which I think are fairly straightforward to. Uh, identify and I would put them down as basically um, being religion oops and conflict now the conflict comes from the um, the man himself this comes from the, the, the conflict within the elder about his belief in God and how that contrasts with the, the sights he's seeing the ending is definitely ambiguous. On the one hand, the last word, I am calm, um, could be that he has turned his back on God. However, I think there's also a sense that he is calm and that yes, he has accepted God's will. Um, Crichton Smith's own atheistic views would seem to indicate that it's the notion that he's turned his back on God. But I think it is deliberately ambiguous and it's open to us to interpret it in the way which suits us. I think that's one of the hallmarks of a, of a good poem in that there is no one definite way of reading it that depending on how we wish to interpret it, how wish we, we wish to give evidence to support our own point of view, uh, we can read the poem in either of those ways. And I think that's one of the great strengths of the poem that Crichton Smith leaves us with this ambiguity. And the final thing I want to say is that one of the great dangers of reading any poem in, in real depth and ripping it apart and sort of like saying, oh, this word means this and that word means that, and is that we lose sight of the big picture. We lose sight of what the poem is really about. And it's a, it's a very realistic 
um, response to a, a very human tragedy. Crichton Smith was inevitably moved by the tragedy, um, understandably, for it to have happened on the, the 1st of January with these men, some of whom had been away from home for four and a half years, for the ship to have gone down um, within sight of their homes was a terribly cruel, cruel thing to happen. And, um, you know, irrespective of anything, the the poem is an attempt to come to terms with that, and we should always try and look at the poem as a whole, as a response uh, to the tragedy of the sinking of the Isle of Lear.